All right, this one's unscripted, so wish me luck. Hey, Marcus Hutzel here. And in this video, I kind of wanted to show you how I recorded one of my previous videos, specifically the um, one on USB gain structure featuring the Scarlett 2i2. Because in that video, I had a lot of things recording and I even have more things recording in this video because I have to have cameras to record the cameras that I recorded with for that video. And I don't mean this as any type of humble brag. I have a lot of equipment. It's part of what I do for a living. And it's also obviously uh, a fun hobby for me. Um, and it also just makes me better at trying to color balance different brand cameras and just using all the fun toys that I have to make videos, hopefully educational videos, um, videos that may help you. Hopefully they help you. That's that's my goal here with my channel is to um, have fun and hopefully teach you something that can help you better your own videos and your own audio, video and lighting uh, production needs. And again, keep in mind, I didn't buy all this at the same time. I've been accumulating this stuff for many years. I've had this camera for probably 10 years plus and a lot of the other stuff uh, probably gathering for the past five or six years. So I didn't go out and buy all this at once. Um, you don't need all this equipment to do even half the stuff that I do on my YouTube channel. All you really need is a camera and a microphone and you can still teach or provide entertaining content. So this is just how I like to do it. I like to use all the equipment that I have. So anyway, in that video and in this video, I'm obviously talking to my main eight camera, which is my Panasonic GH5. And let's see if you can see it from up there. Not really, let me pull this camera in a little bit. And as we go up there, you can see, actually you can't see the camera because it's behind my little homemade teleprompter. I did a video on how I made this teleprompter. I will link to it up there, definitely down below. But on that little teleprompter, I have my old, old iPhone 6S that still works um, for scripts. I put my scripts on that phone and I use the Prompt Smart Pro app and I either use my other phone to scroll that script if I need to back up. But the Prompt Smart Pro software actually listens with the microphone on the uh, iPhone there and follows as I read. It works pretty well most of the time. But anyway, so I have that up there. So directly behind the teleprompter is my Panasonic GH5. Let's see if we can see it at all. So there it is. You can see the little Leica uh, name on the lens back there. But anyway, so that's obviously my main A camera. My B camera, which I used to cut to from that side, is my newest edition, my Sony a7 IV. Got that uh, last December as an early Christmas present to myself. And as you can see here, I have it mounted over to my right, just above where my laptop sits. And it's great. I love the color that comes right out of camera. The autofocus, the face autofocus is great. So I really just put it up there, set the white balance, and, and I'm done with that one. But it's a good cutaway shot. And the reason I like using two cameras is that because if I mess up on a word and I need to repeat that part of the script, if I just cut away to another camera, you can't always tell that I messed up and it just helps the video flow and uh, not have a bunch of jump cuts here on the main eight camera shot. So camera one, camera two. Now with the GH5, I'm actually hooked up via my iPad to the Wi-Fi network that the GH5 puts out so that I can have my iPad over here, my iPad mini. And the reason I need that is simply because GH5 does not have good autofocus, so obviously I don't use it. So I have to use the app to focus. And I put my hand up here to give the focus uh, box a little bit more surface area to grab so that I know I'm in focus. But I like to have it there, especially since with the teleprompter around the camera, it's hard to get to the buttons. So I can hit start and stop recording here on the iPad and not have to worry about trying to find the button behind all my stuff up here. The Sony a7 IV, I actually have the HDMI out going over to this little Lilliput seven inch monitor. And as you can see, I like to have the Sony's menu coming out of that camera, mainly because I get the red tally light so I know that that camera's recording. And it just lets me have a view here um, so that I just I know what's going on with that camera versus having to look all the way up there and try to see the small screen on the camera. I just have a larger monitor right there. So from this view, I can see myself just to the left here in camera A, I can see myself just to the right here 
in camera B. And that's my typical setup, but for that video that I'm talking about, the USB gain structure using the Scarlett 2i2, I needed to film the front of the Scarlett 2i2. So I used my Sony ZV-1, which I picked up used on eBay, by the way, so I got a pretty good deal on that. It came mint condition. I have the ZV-1 just focused in tight there on the front of the Scarlett 2i2. Sorry about the audio if I drift off because my microphones are up there. I'll get to those in a second. Anyway, the Sony ZV-1 is focused there and I've got it mounted directly to my desk using this small articulating arm. And because I didn't want to always have to look down at the Sony ZV-1's um, monitor on the back, I ran an HDMI cable out of the Sony ZV-1 and I ran it up around my desk over to uh, I happen to have a spare Atomos Ninja so that I can just see the Sony ZV-1's output right there instead of having to look down here all the time. And mounted right over here in front and slightly above the Scarlett 2i2 that I needed to feature is my little Aperture MC light mounted on an 11 inch friction arm that is clamped to this small pipe I installed on my desk. And I wanted an extra light here because the Sony ZV-1 doesn't have as great low light uh, capabilities as my other Sony cameras, so I needed a little extra light. So I just threw the MC down. I think it's on like 4% just to give a little bit of light here on the front of the 2i2. So on the lighting note, let's talk about lighting real quick. I've done some videos on my lighting setup, but I'll just cover it really quickly. I've got my key light up there, obviously. And of course I have some colored lighting and tube lights and Edison lights behind me here in my office to provide some color and some texture. And I've got the little Aperture MC lighting up the front of the 2i2, but I needed more light on the desk because otherwise it was too dark for the ZV-1 to capture this. So I'll turn the light off that's lighting at my desk real quick. So you can see from the side shot, kind of how dim it is. And that's not always bad, but if I'm demonstrating something on the desk, I need more light on the desk. And right up here, I don't know if you can see it, I have a little Viltrox, it's like a four by six inch or a three by six inch little light. I find it's a little too bright, it's dimmest is still too bright. So I just taped a little piece of neutral density filter to the front and that provides this light here on the desk. And of course, with my A camera there, uh, as I've shown you before on videos, I keep my monitor on uh, an articulating visa mount so I can take the monitor and bring it up or down. When I don't need to use the camera, I take the teleprompter away and I just bring the monitor down here. I'll show you that real quick. Let me take my iPhone out of the way. We will remove the teleprompter. It slides out just with enough room right there. Put that away. So there, without the teleprompter in the way, you can see from the side shot that I can just bring this down and um, then just use my computer here uh, as a normal computer desk because I do work from home quite a bit with my job and uh, I don't always need the camera. So it's great to have my monitor on that articulating arm, but we'll raise it back up and we'll do the rest of this video without the teleprompter because I'm not reading a teleprompter. Anyway, so onwards. On that screen up there, I am using Adobe Audition to record not only that video, but this one as well, because when I'm demonstrating using and gain structuring microphones, I needed to show you what's going on in either my Mac OS system preferences, which I used a lot in that video to show you where to find things and what to watch. And then uh, you can see Adobe Audition back there recording part of this video with this microphone and my secondary microphone. I'll get to that in a sec. And of course I can switch back and forth in Adobe Audition to you know, either the mixer view or the recording view to make sure I'm recording because I had forgotten to actually record the beginning of this video using Adobe Audition, but we're recording now and you're hearing the SM58 right now, which I'm recording through the Scarlett 2i2. And just like in that previous video, in this video I'm using input two of the Scarlett uh, to feed my Rode NTG5 down. I'll put on screen which microphone you're hearing at any given time because I'm actually recording with three microphones. I take that back, four microphones. The SM58 is one of them. Uh, the main microphone that's going into the GH5 is my Rode VideoMic NTG and it's going over there just via a 3.5 millimeter cable directly into the GH5 and you're hearing that now. Uh, that can be a little noisy sometimes because it is using the preamp on the GH5, which is why I'm also recording with the Rode NTG5 because it paired with the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 is a very quiet signal chain. If you're hearing any noise right now, it's actually because you're hearing a little fan running down there because it's hot in here and you might actually hear the air conditioner. 
So microphone one is going into the GH5, microphone, let's call it the SM58, microphone two is going directly into Adobe Audition, microphone three is going into Adobe Audition, and then my fourth microphone is actually my completely backup microphone in case any of these other mics fail. I've got a little Audio-Technica AT2021 little pencil condenser, a small diaphragm condenser mic, and it is running over here into my Zoom F8N. And I did that because I had the mic, I had the recorder, and it was a way in case any of these other things fail that I always have audio and I can just pop that mic on into the edit if I needed to. And then I have a single microphone articulating boom arm coming up and over my computer monitor. And then I have all three of those microphones mounted at the end of that single arm. So lots of audio recording. Now, as I'm recording the screen, I'm actually doing that with free software. I'm doing that with OBS. I find it's good enough for what I need. Uh, if we look here, let me record the screen. We're gonna get some uh, video delay going on, but you can see here, I've actually got my profile set up. This is a 1440p monitor. Uh, this is a BenQ monitor. I'll link to it down below. It's been pretty good. Got it from b &H Photo. But I'm recording my screen at 24 frames per second at 2560 by 1440. And the way I'm syncing all this up is obviously with audio. Maybe it's not obvious, but I'm syncing all this up with audio. So I needed to make sure that my screen recording was also recording audio. And as you can see here, I'm just using the internal mic on the MacBook Pro to capture my voice because that allows me to sync it and post. I'm not actually using that mic in the edit, although I'll let you hear it a little bit here just to see that it's not really a great mic at this distance, but it is great for being able to record onto my screen record so I can sync that up in post. And let's look at the settings. I believe my main recording, when I do screen records for uh, YouTube videos, I'm recording at 30,000 kilobits per second or 30 megabits per second. I find that's a, a really, uh, for me, a baseline because um, it captures higher quality video from the screen recordings. So we'll drop that out of the way. We'll go back to Adobe Audition. So I don't know, I think that's it. Um, camera A, iPad control so I can see it and focus. Camera B going to this little Lilliput monitor so I can monitor myself right there. Camera three or C, I don't know if I've been going back and forth between letters and numbers, whatever. The third camera, ZV-1 going up to my little Atomos Ninja up there just so I can monitor and see that up there. Um, got my four microphones. I'm recording the screen, syncing all that up with audio. And DaVinci Resolve, I've been using DaVinci Resolve for probably well over a year now. I really haven't been using Adobe Premiere. Uh, DaVinci is just faster. It's faster on the edit. It's faster on the export. Um, there are some quirks about it I really don't like. I really like some features of Premiere better, but Premiere was slowing me down and I just made the jump to DaVinci and I think it's a good choice. I use the free version. I do not have the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. So everything pretty much within the past year you've seen on my channel and the professional work that I do edit, I edit with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And again, the free version has just about everything you really ever need for professional edits. And I always, always create a multicam sequence first. I don't do any cutting there. Make a multicam sequence, which is exactly how I edited the video you're watching. I put everything, synced it up in one timeline, did not edit that timeline at all. Then you uh, make that a multicam sequence, sorry, sequence timeline. Premiere Sequence DaVinci Resolve Timeline. I make a multi-camera timeline, don't edit anything there. I dump that multi-camera into a new timeline and then you can edit to your heart's content, choose camera angles, and you can choose audio angles as well. So yeah, I highly recommend using multi-camera sequences for all your video edits. Anyway, hey, I think that camera drifted during this shoot. Oh well, it's unscripted. What do you do? I got things to do. It's Friday night. I gotta get out of here. So I hope this was a little educational to show you my setup. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I think I've answered everything that I possibly can about how I recorded that video. So take it for what it's worth, and I'll see you in the next one. Later. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Color matching. Um, I have an x right color checker, which will just use this portion of the video to white balance. This one's a bit harder because it's so far away, and if I turn, too far, then the white card is out of my main light. So just have to do the best I can, try to angle it, and uh, then match the rest up by eye. And we'll get this one over here. 
doing my best to keep, um, again, the white card in the main light that's hitting me. Um, I recorded some of this with a GoPro. I'm just gonna leave that one alone and try to color match it as best I can with my eye. But anytime I'm getting my main cameras, I really try to remember uh, because I do forget sometimes to get at least, at least that white part of this X-Rite color checker. 